Mostly because it's very difficult many times for us to get those patients to the ground. And if we don't have a mat, like look behind Lindsay back there, you can see the mats. If you don't have those mats uh, accessible, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to urge you not to do that. Now for us in here, we have these wonderful mat tables, right? This is a great way to start the unit. You can see I walked right up here to it and got into this position, right? It's softer on our knees, and that's really what we need to consider about our patients. And then you can transition that to this. Kneeling to half kneeling is the progression. We did that in our, in our developmental sequence a few weeks ago. Remember, it's still up there. We always want to go from half or from kneeling to half kneeling. And here's the deal. Look at the base of support that I have here. It runs all the way through from my knee down my tibia, right? And into my toes. When I transition to this, I literally have a smaller physical space in contact with the floor or the mat. That's why this is a more challenging position, right? And then from there, we will move back to standing. Now, think about this. Standing is pretty dynamic in and of itself, but we can introduce movements to standing, right? Um, your book talks about some of those unique testing that we can do. We're going to go over the tests on Monday in class, like how to test balance. I know that you've done that, but what we do, one of them for anticipatory, um, walk back here real quick for me. One of them is the five star step test, or the, the star step test. And the patients basically stand and they tap, 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 right? And so it's just in a star pattern. You can do this with other uh, tools. This is just what I bought this mat for. Um, this and some other reasons, but having those dots where they can see. Right? And then I also can teach lunging off of this. They can do just typical front sagittal plane lunge or a forward lunge or a reverse lunge. They can also do a diagonal lunge, right? They can do a reverse diagonal lunge. And this also is a great way to teach the curtsy lunge. And you're holding on to them while they're doing that or just standing? Yes. Yes. And that's why you have them from the side. Is this a digital system? No, we're, we're going to get into that here. Oh, okay. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of going off the cuff and showing you some other things that we're going to be doing. All right. So when we want to start talking about um, the visual system, what you need to keep in mind is that to challenge the visual system, they need to lose their vision. And how do you do that? Very simply have them close their eyes. Okay. Now, from seated to standing, whatever you do, you have to be sure that you have that gate belt in hand. Because the moment you say, close your eyes, they lose their ability to see their head level, right? Now, you all have experienced this, but if you haven't, go ahead and stand up for me. Make sure there's no sharp objects around you. Take and stand on one foot, I don't care which one, and close your eyes. Now some of you are doing pretty good. Some of you really noticed the challenge come up, but then open. Now for you, who I would probably assume have normal balance, there was still a challenge, right? It's still, it still ticked in, so you were able to appreciate that. Now a person who has balance issues, that's going to be stronger. And if they have vision issues, then they already have deficits. 
what you're doing is you're trying to tap into what you need to do to get that deficit better. It's a simply, it, 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 it's, it's one of the simplest things. Close your eyes. That's how you challenge the visual system. You could do some other things. You could lower light. That's, that's obviously one way of doing it as well. But just challenge the visual system by closing the eyes. When you want to challenge the vestibular system, you're going to have to bring head movement in. And so I'm going to tell you that there's three ways of doing that. The simplest way is to move them in the sagittal plane. That is chin to chest and then head up, right? So this is standing right here. When we get to gait in just a few weeks, I will have you do this. I'm gonna come out here and go. Possibly, you, might, you, you may have to do this in the parallel bars because they may need tactile cueing independently here. Where they step. But as I'm holding on, I get some out of sensory input. Right? But I'm moving my head. So what am I challenging? I'm challenging the vestibular system. Every step, I'm moving my head. Well, come try. I mean, for even like myself, and there's so much, you know.